when I use the phrase nested, what I mean is a container that resides inside another container or a box inside a larger parent box or a parent element, if you will. So it's just a box inside a box, right? That's what a nested element or a nested object is. And everything on my page, whether I know it or not, is already nested at least one level in. Again, if you're thinking in terms of an overall structure, right? Like a hierarchy. Okay, so let me flip over to my code, for instance, and I could say, all right, my heading one is nested inside my body. My heading two is also nested inside my body. My paragraph and my divs are all nested inside body as well. So they're all one level in. But what I wanna start getting into is something, again, incrementally more complex here, and I think we can handle it. I want to get into setting positioning values on nested objects. So give me a moment here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find my blue div. There he is right there. Rather than positioning from the top and the right, I'm going to position from the top and the left. So I'm just changing right back to left. And let's see, I'm going to drop down my pixel values. I'm going to drop these guys all the way down to just five pixels. So that means that this object should be positioned five pixels in from the top and five pixels in from the left, just like that. Okay, wonderful. So then what I could do if I were so inclined is I could then take some content and drop it into my blue div. Let me give you a really, really quick example of this. I'm gonna go and find just a little bit of content, maybe a little bit of text, and I'm gonna copy that content, and I'm gonna go and paste it into my blue div, being careful to position my cursor exactly where it needs to be, and then I will paste just like this. Now, give me a moment. I'm just going to sort of, once again, clean my screen up just a little bit so you can see exactly what's happening here. So I have my blue div, I have the starting point for the blue div, and then I have some content, and then I have the closing point for the blue div. So I'm going to take this content that appears inside the blue div, and I'm going to wrap it in another HTML element, in my example, a paragraph. So now, again, going back to this concept of boxes inside boxes or structural hierarchy, we now have three levels. I've got a paragraph on the inside, then a div, then the body itself. And if you wanna take a look at how this looks inside your browser, head on back and refresh. And now we have just a little bit of content appearing inside the blue container, just like that. Kind of hard to see, but the content is in there. And I'm not really too concerned about formatting the content at this point. Again, it's more about creating this structure. So now what I could do is again, getting incrementally more complex is I could take this entire blue div and nest it inside another div. So we're gonna have a div inside a div. And that's gonna create four levels of structure, if you will, the paragraph, the blue div, the outermost div or the parent div, and then of course the body. So check this out, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the blue div, I'm gonna cut them, controller command X, just like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and find my red div. He should be the second guy now, because I cut that guy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my cursor inside the red div, just like this. And what I'll do is I will paste my blue div into the red div. Does that make sense? It gets a little bit tricky because there's so much code happening now, but essentially what I have is the red div. The red div contains the blue div and the blue div contains the paragraph. So let's go and check out exactly what happens here. I'm gonna save my code and flip back over to the browser and refresh. And to my great shock and surprise, and perhaps yours as well, the blue div doesn't move. The blue div doesn't move inside the red div. Should it not have moved into the red div because it's now nested inside the red div? What's going on here? Well, here's the catch, here's the deal. There's no positioning value on the red div. If I flip back over to my code and I look for my red div, there's no positioning at all, right? There's just a background color, width, and height. So if there's no positioning value, on the parent element, in this case, a red div, then what happens is the nesting gets ignored and the inner div, the inner element, goes back and uses the next element up in the structure, which happens to be the body or the actual page itself, okay? 
kind of confusing. You might need to watch this a couple of times. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip back over to my code. And I'm going to throw on a positioning value now onto my red div, and we're going to see the result coming in here. So I'm going to throw my cursor into my red div, and I'm going to add on a position, a position property of absolute. There we go. Followed by a semicolon. Let's see here, I'm gonna throw a top of, let's say 200 pixels, just like that. Go ahead and save this guy, flip back over and refresh. And now the blue div moves. The blue div moves to now position itself inside the red div. As a matter of fact, give me a second, I'm gonna go back to my code here and look for my blue div. And I'm gonna change his offset values top and left from five to 10, just so we can see this guy in there. Save this up and refresh. There he is. Okay, so now we can clearly see that the paragraph, the blue div, are all residing inside the red div. Okay, so if you're taking notes, definitely jot this down that the nesting behavior is ignored if there's no positioning property set on the parent element. Again, I know it's a little wacky, it's a little tough. This is probably one of the tougher things that we've had to go through here together, but that's the deal, okay? That's how it works. Now, where the heck is the yellow div? Where did the yellow div go? Well, he is there, he's behind the red div. The red div overlaps the yellow div because don't forget, I set absolute for the red div and absolute means that the object, the element, the red div, is pulled out of the normal page flow, the normal flow of content. So now we're getting an overlapping effect. If you wanna actually see this, what I could do here is I could come back to, let's see my red div here, and I could throw on a left value. I could say something like left, full colon space, 100 pixels, followed by a semicolon, save and refresh and shove that red div over towards the right to reveal the yellow div underneath. Okay, so that's, again, how that works. And again, I know this is getting complex. I know it's getting tricky. So as always, you may want to pause things up and experiment for a few minutes. But of course, there's even more that I want to show you.